Hello there, this is Everard Junction and this is going to be a uh, another tutorial. Now I get quite a lot of comments um, a lot of the time about uh, the uh, concrete I've got done down here. It's always like, you know, how did you do the concrete or that looks really good or you know, what did you use to make the concrete or can you do a video on the concrete? So this is a video on how to do the concrete. You see paved areas like this for um, like yards and depots and stuff where engines are stood. Um, it makes it easier for the crews to get out and walk about rather than having to walk around in the mud or in the gravel. And uh, it's a nice thing to uh, feature on a layout. So if we go over to the left hand side of the layout, this is where um, the old sort of TMD used to be. And I'm redeveloping it, making it a bit different. Um, so it's a good opportunity to show how I do the concrete. Those of you uh, familiar with the layout will remember that I had a shed here with uh, a paved area underneath it um, and there was a small paved area out the front on these two lines. Um, what I've done is uh, I've made the area a bit larger um, which will allow me to store DMUs instead of engines here um, such as the 108 and the 150. So what I've done is I've just added to it, so you can see there's a seam along here where the polyfiller joins to uh, an existing piece. Uh, so this was where the old stuff used to be, and there was a gap here where the shed slotted in a few bits and pieces, so you can see where I've filled it all in, and then this stuff on this side, this is all, this is all new. Um, and I've also done the, uh, the centres of the tracks as well. Um, it's not painted up or anything yet, it's still very much working on it, and making sure it works, um, but as you can see, the rails are nice and shiny and there's a nice groove either side uh, for wagons to run, so get a small four-wheeled wagon. You can see that it runs perfectly. So coming off the back of uh, where the old shed used to be, um, you can see I've extended the polyfiller slightly when there's another seam that runs up there. Um, so this is an open area. Um, they're going to have uh, a pathway come off, a uh, concrete pathway comes along and then go into a paved area over here and this is where the shed that used to be over here will, uh, will now sit over here and uh, it just gives me an excuse to uh, develop the area, make it look a bit more realistic. So over here you can see the, uh, the first stages of doing this uh, polyfiller stuff. Um, the first thing you need to do is make a mould which is what I've already done. Um, I didn't film me putting this together because it's, it's very tedious and boring. It's, it's quite simple to understand. Um, so basically, they're just matchsticks. You can see there, uh, there's a matchstick on top of each other. So you've got two matchsticks, um, and they just run around the area that you want to have uh, the polyfiller in it. So when I put all the polyfiller in here, it's not going to splodge and run out of the edges. It, the matchsticks will keep it in place. Um, they're glued in with PVA glue. They haven't used too much and they'll be fairly easy to just snap off the baseboard once I'm finished. It's exactly the same thing I did when I redeveloped this part over here. Where the uh, concrete is going to come to the edge of the baseboard, you can see I've just cheated. Um, I've got a piece of hardboard um, and I've screwed it into the side of the baseboard and I've just raised it by the uh, height that I want the concrete to be. Um, it's about uh, four or five mil, I think. And that just brings it uh, level with the tops of the rails, and so it'll all nicely uh, smooth out. And that can just plonk the shed on top, and uh, it'll look, uh, look pretty good, I think. Much better than just having bare track, and then just popping the shed on top there. All of the insides of sheds, especially sheds where maintenance are carried out, usually have a paved area, um, so uh, maintenance crews can walk about and actually get on with their job. So to do this, um, you're going to need some water. Uh, so just get a bucket or something, or a bowl or whatever, put some water in it. Um, you'll need some polyfiller. Um, I tend to use the, uh, the ready mix stuff. I just find it a bit easier to use than the powder variety. You can use the powder variety if you want. It just means you're going to have to mix it yourself. Um, it doesn't matter if you use interior or exterior. Um, I'm using exterior today because that, that's what was in the garage. Um, I've used interior in the past. Um, this area is all interior polyfiller. Um, it's been in situ for well over a year now and it hasn't cracked or shrunk or moved or anything, it, it stayed perfect. Um, I'm sure the exterior stuff will be the same because the exterior stuff is basically normal polyfiller, just a bit harder. You will need uh, a straight edge to smooth the polyfiller. Um, you can use anything from a piece of wood, a piece of metal or whatever. Um, I'm just using an old shatterproof ruler because uh, that's what was lying around. 
Um, you're also going to need uh, a sander, a bit like this one. Um, you'll need something quite aggressive to do the sanding because it's a very large area um, and you need to get it perfectly flat. If you do it by hand, you can, but you'll be there for the rest of your life trying to achieve a smooth finish. Um, with this thing, I can quite simply just put different grades of sandpaper on it and, uh, and smooth it, the area out. And uh, it makes it a hell of a faster job. Uh, with the sanding, some of you may be worried about uh, damaging the uh, the rail, and uh, I totally understand, because um, obviously if you if you sand the metal of a uh, model railway track, you're going to put little scratches in the in the surface of the rail, um, and that will attract dirt, and it will make the track difficult to clean, and uh, it'll become dirty a lot faster. Um, the way I get around it is uh, when you're sanding all this polyfiller, obviously you're going to be using a reasonable, aggressive grade of sandpaper. Um, gradually reduce that grade, or increase that grade rather, to uh, really, really, really fine stuff until you're basically polishing the surface rather than sanding it. So I'm talking about something like, you know, 1200 wet and dry sandpaper. That'll polish all the little scratches out of the rail and make it nice and shiny, as you can see. Right, so we're now uh, ready to get started and uh, I'll show you how I do it. Um, but first of all, let me just quickly say that this job is very messy. Um, you need to have a degree of experience if you're going to tackle something like this. This is something that when it goes wrong, it can go really wrong and you could end up with an entire area that you can't use. You know, the trains don't work. Um, so if you're really not very confident on doing this or you've never done it before, you know, practice on a, on a piece of track just nailed to a small piece of wood. Do a little, a small sort of area or something. Um, don't just dive in on the model railway and uh, have a go because you, you, you know it might go wrong. Um, you can never predict what's going to happen. Okay, so just open your polyfiller and start scooping some of it out. You don't want to put too much on at one time. Just start building it up. Just put a bit in there. You can see on its own the polyfiller pre-mixed stuff anyway, it moves around quite a lot, it's difficult to shape, um, you'll need to add a little bit of water to it, um, so once we've got enough on there, I'll start adding some water on, that will uh, make it much easier to spread and move around. So just wet your straight edge and then start prodding the polyfiller, getting the water to penetrate through the filler. This will uh, reduce its consistency and make it easier to spread. You can see how much easier it spreads when you get uh, a bit of water into it. I'm not going for a perfect finish in this area, it's just a pathway. It would have probably been fairly hastily built um, by the construction guys as just a means of getting between uh, the two areas of storage for locos, um, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You can use the matchsticks that have been laid in um, to hold your straight edge and then you can smooth it to the level that you need. Don't worry about little bits seeping over the edge like here. Most of it's made of water and it's not uh, particularly high. Um, so the scenery will cover that up.
so there you go uh, that's basically how you do it just keep smoothing it about and uh, eventually you'll get there um, try not to make too much of a mess um, it's inevitable that you will make a little bit of a mess but it's okay if you can just you can just clean it up um, you don't want to have big splodges going all over the place um, as you can see on the left and the right hand side the importance of a mould becomes clear and um, it keeps uh, everything where it needs to be and uh, yeah so you just need to uh, wait for it to dry really get it as smooth as you can using the uh, the straight edge and then wait for it to dry um, but you will need to monitor it while it dries um, and I'll show you that coming up in the next few minutes um, with what you need to do as it dries um, also remember that uh, it's going to take a long time to dry um, this stuff is usually used for filling in small cracks in walls and things like that um, and it will dry fairly quickly in thin layers but you've got five millimeters here of thick polyfiller um, in a huge area as well, there's a, there's a big mess of it all here um, it's going to take a good 12 hours to dry certainly before it uh, can be sanded okay um, I've waited about I'd say probably an hour, an hour and a half um, and now the polyfiller has very much started to dry now you've got to do something really important you must remember to do this otherwise it will cause you a real pain when you uh, come back when it's fully dry now at some point you're going to have to remove these when the polyfiller is dry because you don't want all the matchsticks being visible but when the polyfiller dries it's going to have bonded to the matchsticks it's going to make them really difficult to remove so what you need to do is when the polyfiller has dried to the consistency of say cream cheese um, which is what it's like now is take a scalpel and just run along the edge of the mould like that just put a cut into the filler that separates the matchsticks from the filler it also lets a bit of air get down the side and makes the filler dry a bit faster um, and it just means that you'll be able to remove the matchsticks much easier when it comes to it Don't worry if uh, a bit of it goes back in, it means it's just not fully dry yet. So just come back to it later and do another slit. And then do the same um, all the way around the edge um, so you can remove the matchsticks nice and easily. Um, it's a different colour at the end because I've had to uh, use some uh, different filler. Um, I ran out of the white stuff while I was filming. Um, so I got uh, some other filler and just mixed it up and put it down. Um, it's still made by the same people, it's just a different colour. Um, so it'll be fine. So now I've cut all around the edges. Uh, I'll come back again in another two hours or so just make sure that the cuts are still there if not recut them and then uh, leave it overnight for it to dry and in the morning um, it'll be ready um, to be sanded nice and smooth. While the filler is this uh, sort of spongy consistency it's worth running an old wagon down the track just to cut a, a small groove it doesn't have to be perfect um, that small groove will prove very useful um, once the filler is dried Okay, it's now the uh, the following morning, and uh, the filler has now dried. It's rock hard, so it's now ready to uh, be sanded. Um, so the first thing we need to do before we do any of that is to uh, remove the mould. Um, as you can see, already started taking off the side piece here, 
Um, and I've just gone around here and taken off uh, the moulding around this part here. Um, it will be a little bit tricky to get off, but uh, just use an old scalpel with a blunt blade. Um, what I tend to do is push the scalpel underneath the uh, bottom edge of the matchstick and just run it along and you'll break the seal of the glue and the matchstick will come away and you can just work your way up. Obviously it is a bit fiddly, try not to uh, stab yourself in the process. But provided you've only glued the matchsticks down loosely, they should come away fairly easily. So there's the last one. Rip that off. And there you can see you've got a nice clean edge um, where the filler ends. Um, and the same on this side too, you can see there's a thickness to it. So now I uh, just need to get ready and uh, sand it. Okay, you're going to need something fairly aggressive to do the sanding because uh, you'll be wasting quite a lot of time if you try and do it by hand. Um, so I'm using one of these, which will do the job much faster. Um, the sandpaper, I've got it on the, at the moment, is uh, 120 grit, so it's fairly aggressive. Um, you'll need that to take off the uh, the top layer of polyfiller and get a nice smooth layer. From that, I take it up to 1500 grit, which is much, much smoother, which polishes all the rail heads and uh, really smooths out the polyfiller ready for uh, an application of paint. Okay, I've um, given it a fairly aggressive uh, sanding with the 120 grit paper. Um, it's all lovely and smooth now, um, in terms of uh, the 120 anyway. Um, it's nice and flat. Um, the final finishing will come in a bit. Um, it took me about two and a half minutes to get that all nice and sanded, so it's well worth using a nice power tool rather than your bare hands to do it. Um, so now we just need to vacuum off the excess and uh, then we'll have a pretty good idea of uh, how well um, the actual uh, project is going to turn out. Okay, it's, uh, it's been smoothed out and the uh, excess has been hoovered off. Um, we can now see that there are a couple of cracks. Um, it's inevitable that this is going to happen. Um, you're using a lot of polyfiller um, and there's quite a thickness to it. Um, so it's inevitable that you'll get a couple of cracks. Uh, so we've got one there, uh, one there, there's another one over there, and there's quite a big one in the corner. Um, now the odd crack is okay because that looks actually quite realistic. Um, but lots of cracks isn't a good thing. So um, I'm going to quickly mix up a, a bit of polyfiller and just go over those. Um, because you're just filling in a small crack and doing what the product is actually designed for, um, it will only take 10 or 15 minutes to dry and then you can start sanding it. I've now changed over to the uh, 1500 grit uh, wet and dry sandpaper. And this will uh, really smooth up the area, give it a nice finish. Okay, um, we're getting there now, um, but a problem that's obviously going to happen immediately is if we try and run a wagon into the track, it runs up onto the polyfiller and ends up going wherever it wants to. So obviously we can't have that, uh, we need it to work nice and realistically, like this. Now, um, a lot of people uh, do what I did while it was uh, drying, and they take a wagon, and what they'll do is, as the polyfiller dries, they'll keep running it through, and it will create some grooves. Now, that's fine, and it does work. I mean, I tested it yesterday, um, but the grooves aren't always quite as big as you would like, so I've come up with uh, quite a handy method um, for uh, getting the grooves nice and deep, so any form of rolling stock can run through, no problem at all. And uh, to do that, you need uh, one of these mini drills with a cutting disc on the end of it. And what you do is uh, you get to your, the starting point and you hook the mini drill like that. Don't, don't apply any pressure, just, just sort of keep it quite loose. Hook it into the uh, sort of recess in the rail um, and as the disc turns it will drive itself down the uh, polyfiller and it will cut a nice little groove as it goes, as you can see. 
Yeah, then that means anything can run over the top of it. Okay, so I've just done the uh, the left hand track and again it took about two minutes to do that and it now runs really nicely over the top of that. It almost feels like the polyfiller isn't there. So that means trains are going to run really well over that. Okay, um, just on for a quick test. I've cleaned up this track uh, so I'm just going to run the class 37 in there and just see uh, how well it works. Seems to work fairly well. Just going to quickly test the uh, the furthest track, this one over here. Give it a push. Track hasn't been fully cleaned yet. This is just for uh, testing. I'm trying to make sure that the uh, the grooves are correct. Um, they seem to be. This uh, loco has quite large wheels and it runs pretty well. Okay, so uh, the tracks all appear to work. Uh, nothing certainly seems to uh, jump off the rails or get stuck anywhere. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, getting the track nice and clean. Um, it's fairly clean already, as you can see. Uh, it's not too bad. But uh, I'll clean it a bit more anyway. Um, also, the, uh, the concrete will need to be painted. Um, I won't show you me doing that because uh, I've shown you how to paint various bits and pieces before. Um, I tend to paint this stuff with my airbrush and then uh, using a cotton bud or something uh, just wipe the excess paint off of the uh, the rail and uh, it should be fine. You know, use a track rubble or whatever to uh, just get the, uh, the rail nice and uh, shiny. The uh, little pathway between the two areas has come out quite well too. Um, you can see I've rounded off the corner there just with the uh, cutting disc on that uh, mini drill. 
um, over here it will uh, all remain open uh, much like uh, it is over there it'll be the same sort of thing um, but this bit will have my engine shed on it so if I uh, just go and grab it so it'll sit somewhere around here haven't found an exact spot for it yet but uh, it'll be something like that and you can see you've got the uh, the pathway for the workers to walk up I've left a little bit out the front so they can then walk inside so uh, there you go um, that was the tutorial on uh, how to uh, make the uh, concrete appearance uh, in model form I um, hope it's answered a couple of your questions and given you a few ideas um, as I say it is a messy job and it is relatively difficult if you don't think you're going to be able to pull it off or you don't feel confident just don't do it because if you dive in and have a go and it goes wrong um, it will go really wrong you could end up with all three of these tracks being jammed up with polyfiller you might not be able to use the trains properly or anything so this is a relatively advanced job um, there's also a lot of mess involved if you get any polyfiller on any scenery you've already done obviously you're going to have to rip that scenery up and do it again so uh, you have to be uh, very careful so uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, I'm going to get on and start uh, cleaning up and painting up the area um, getting the uh, shed a little bit more in place um, but I think that's uh, that overall is uh, a much nicer looking uh, TMD uh, I never really used those two sidings and I always felt that that area over there was a bit excluded um, I put some track on it and just left it, it was a bit out of the way and never really did anything so the shed's a nice way to fill the corner um, and I should be able to start using those two tracks a bit more effectively um, and then in the background you'll be able to see the main line trains passing without the shed being in the way um, as I say uh, it used to be over there um, so with the shed being up here you could only see sort of this area of the layout so I think this is going to work a lot better